What a storybook ending to a high school basketball career for Florian High School senior Bailey Miller. Friday night, we showed you this video. He hit this game-winning three-pointer on senior night, his final home game. Wow. Uh, but a few weeks ago, his twin brother, Brentley, rewrote an entire chapter in his young life. Tonight, we travel down to Florine for the kind of good stuff few thought was ever possible. He's loved ball since he was a toddler, a baby. We bought him the little tights and he would just stay and shoot. They both have, really, Brentley and his identical twin brother, Bailey. When we play as good as we're capable of playing, you'll hear no grops out of me. All the way up to their senior year on the Florine High Black Cats basketball team. The other night when he was on the floor with Bailey, watching them play together really, really made me just think, what, what would it have been like? Oh, oh, woo! Because until a little less than a month ago, unlike Bailey, Brentley had never dressed out for varsity, only as team manager. Everybody pretty much treated me the same as the players. I pick it up. That changed just hours before their January 7th home game against top ranked Simpson High School. Brentley shoots his parents, Scott and Melanie Miller, a quick text. He's suiting up. I did receive a picture, and Brentley's holding up a a jersey. Talk about your proud parent moment. You're looking at it. The faces of 18 years of proud and emotional moments that began as one of the scariest moments. 911, you name an emergency. Any parent could ever imagine. Yes, I need ambulance. I went into active labor um, at my home. Yes, my wife just had a baby here in the van, and she's 27 weeks pregnant. I just wanted to die. I was in so much pain, and I just, I just kept thinking, I can't do this. He's coming two hours later. You can actually hear Melanie moaning in pain, Bradley in her arms, and Brentley yet to be delivered. But more concerning is what you don't hear. Hello. His cell phone cut out, sir. A baby crying. I can hear her in the car yelling at that baby to breathe. All my heart is hurting. Bailey was the one that was touch and go. Bailey, born at two pounds. His brother Brentley, one pound, 12 ounces. Doctors insistent Bailey was kept alive during that wild ride to the hospital. That I couldn't breathe, and I mean, he breathed for me by his yet unborn brother, Brentley. He never went without oxygen because his brother, now identical, was sending oxygen to him outside of the womb. But soon after, Brentley began showing signs of developmental issues. They did a scan of his brain and he had, a, they called it a, like a bruise, I think it's called like leukomalacia. Yeah. The diagnosis, spastic depletia, cerebral palsy. You know, I hope any other kids that have a disability, you know, don't stop working hard, you know, they keep pushing every day. You know, would ask him, when, when yeah. you gonna put the walker down and walk? And he said, when I turn seven. Yeah, he said, I'm gonna walk when I'm seven. And the day he turned seven, he put his walker down. That's the God's honest truth. And there he was, side by side with his brother, playing in the yard or on the basketball court, where he delivered his next miracle shot in the dark. And he told me, I'm going, Mama, one day I'm, my dream is to run out for the Black Cats. I'm going to run out for the Black Cats. You know, and as a mom, I'm like, yes, son, you sure can. Of course, I walk out of the room and go squall to him. He's never going to be able to run out for the Black Cats. Just thank you for giving Brentley the ability to play basketball, the sport he loves. Your holy person, I'm going to do pray. Amen. 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 It's never a good idea to tell mom she's wrong. Well, you know, I kind of just sat back and I just kind of waited for the moment. Except when you're doing that one thing no one really thought you'd ever do. I was trying to keep my camera still, but it was hard because mama was crying because my baby was running out. That night, January 7th, there was Brentley proudly donning number 31. Brentley's not a, a child uh, that expects everything to be handed him. Brentley works really hard. Coach Eddie Jones says Brentley earned the right to be in that uniform. So with the game sadly out of reach and four minutes left on the clock. He pointed at Eliza and like, told Eliza to do this right here. Like, yeah, he, he told wanted him to get, get out, man. Brentley hit the floor with twin brother Bailey and his cousin Brennan. Oh, and with the fans on their feet, Brentley drives the lane. Oh, I'm 
like that. All in my heart, man. Pounding. <laughs> Pounding, yes, sir. But you knew the kid who spent the last 17 plus years trying and trying again until he got it just right. Was it about to fade back into the shadows of the fluorine bench? Coaches get, do get emotional. I have to wipe away a couple of tears. You know that was a bad call. Then just days later, and in the final seconds of a tough game against Zawali, Brentley's number is called again. It worked out. I mean, there was nothing planned, and it just worked out where, you, you know, you, you could be a part of helping a kid make his dreams come true. A dream, Brittley says, is far from over. Oh, no, I'm not done yet. You're doing good. Proud of you, baby. And hats off to those uh, players from Simpson and Zawali cheering when he hit the court. Uh, this isn't the first time Brentley actually made his way to center court inside the Black Cat Gym this fall. Take a look. Yeah, he was named Homecoming King. Uh, and check this out. The yearbooks, they don't get published till the summer, but I got connections at Florian High School now. Check out Brentley's senior quote. I needed help walking in here, but now I'm running out. No truer words ever spoken.